So I tried the Vision Pro. A part of the, my interest came from being interested in vision, including stereo vision. I'm an amateur stereo vision photographer, so I take pictures uh, with sometimes with two cameras, sometimes by um, shifting a camera, sometimes by doing what, what uh, uh, photographers call the cha-cha method. You put your weight on one foot, take a picture, you put your weight on another uh, foot, take a picture. The two shots are taken at approximately the distance between the eyes, and then if you figure out a way of showing the two photographs, one to each eye, overcoming our tendency to either converge on pictures, in which case we see double, or look off into the distance, in which case each image is fuzzy. Uh, the various glasses and uh, stereo techniques, like what you wear at an IMAX theater, are basically ways of delivering one image to each eye, in which case it pops out in depth. But knowing something about the history of stereo photography, I realize there's only so much that people are really willing to pay or uh, how much inconvenience they'll endure to see something in stereoscopic depth. Photography originally was stereo photography. In the 19th century, that's how people saw pictures. They would hold out a wooden stereoscope viewer, invented, by the way, by Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr., a polymath, and one of the things that he did was invent the stereo viewer. And they'd be side-by-side -side photos of pyramids and the Eiffel Tower and Niagara Falls and that's how people saw photography but it it uh, didn't last people weren't willing to put up with the, the wooden stereoscope and um, photography went mono again with the uh, with 35 millimeter and with Kodak cameras and every once in a while there's uh, an attempt to revive stereoscopic uh, imaging and it, it always fizzles. So in the 1950s, there was a, a number of analog ca cameras. My parents' wedding photos were taken in stereo in 1953, and I had to go to eBay to get a, a, a viewer to see them pop out in depth. It was kind of, it's always seen as kind of a gimmick, and then it fizzles out. And then most recently, about uh, 10, 15 years ago, there was the idea that stereo TVs, 3D TVs, were going to be the thing. And families would have to sit and all wear the glasses to see the TV pop out in depth. Now they don't sell stereo TVs anymore. So even though there's a vivid and I think fascinating impression of depth that comes from two-eyed vision, uh, the, we have enough other redundant cues to depth from motion as I just kind of move around, things closer to me move back and forth across my retina more than things that are distant called uh, motion parallax. We have the classic cues of perspective, known since the Renaissance, converging lines. We have interposition, going that is, uh, when one object takes a bite out of the other, we assume that it's in front and, and uh, occluding part of it. That goes back to Cro-Magnon cave paintings. So even though binocular vision does give us an extra vivid sense of depth, it's often dispensable, and the technologies uh, if they're at all cumbersome, people are happy to deal with, with uh, flat images. Now, the uh, Apple Vision Pro goes beyond just stereo vision because it also has a pretty wild, wide field of view. It mixes uh, a, a pretty, uh, pretty good image of your actual surroundings with the virtual displays, like a, um, a set of icons where you can the equivalent of pressing an icon by uh, fixating on it with your eyes and then um, touching your thumb to your forefinger. That's the equivalent of uh, clicking and moving a mouse, respectively. Uh, the, um, as you move your head, the uh, image of the world stays put, as it should. People differ in terms of how nauseating they find the experience is, and one of the classic problems with any kind of virtual reality is, um, as, as one early article put it, the most barphogenic invention since the <laughs> Tilt-A-Whirl. Uh, but uh, for, at least for many people, the Vision Pro overcomes that, partly because uh, motion sickness uh, comes from usually a discrepancy between what you see and what your vestibular and kinesthetic senses tell you. So usually you know, we, we, we see the world, we also sense our motion because of the organs in the inner ear. We also have um, uh, uh, sensation from our joints, tension in our muscles. When they all deliver the same world to the brain, it's fine. When they fall out of sync, we get nauseated. No one knows exactly why, but we often do. If there's a lag, because there's a, a, a 
a CPU and a GPU that is giving you a virtual image uh, at the same time as your head is moving, your body is moving, that makes you sick. Because the sheer processing power in the Vision Pro is so um, uh, awesome, the lag is reduced to pretty much zero, and for a lot of people that gets rid of the, um, the, the, the motion sickness cue. There is, though, a pound and a half headgear uh, on you, and that's um, you, uh, the bridge of my nose started to hurt after a while for the demo. You're not seeing everything. You're seeing a pretty wild field, field of view, but not like what you see in uh, reality. Other people are not seeing the top half of your face, so not only the eyes, but the you know kind of crinkling of the muscles in the forehead and around the eyes that we use to convey expression. Uh, I did not see uh, one of the creepier features of the Vision Pro, which is that it actually does a kind of deep fake of you and it shows it on the outer surface of the visor. So other people, <clears throat> it's as if they're looking at you, expressing emotions, but what they're looking at is actually a, a simulation of you. Um, and, and that can fall into that uncanny valley of creepy rather than either cartoonish or lifelike. It's also, there is a real question of uh, why, what you use it for. Uh, the uh, you know, TVs are pretty good now, flat, big flat screen TVs, they're, they're pretty affordable. Um, the getting work done struck me, at least during this demo, as not a big advantage. Now, granted, like a lot of people, I like a lot of screen real estate, so I have a couple of big monitors on my desk at, at home. Uh, and with this, you could put, you know, one virtual monitor on the floor and one at the ceiling and one here and one there and one there. And all of them are suspended in space and you could look at them as you want. Although you still got to remember what's, what's where. There is an advantage is it taps our spatial memory. So instead of, say, scrolling through screens or minimizing one and expanding another, where you've got to expend some mental effort remembering which document or which window is open where, if you can just put them in different places, then our, the part of the brain that keeps track of space can remember what, what is where. That's, a, that's one advantage. A disadvantage is that the virtual keyboard hovering in space, you gotta kind of go back to the, the hunt and peck and you don't get any tactile feedback. Uh, so it's very, very slow typing, although you can plug in an auxiliary physical keyboard, kind of defeats the purpose. What the real, uh, if there was a, a killer app, it would be the immersive video. So you can be brought into circumstances that most of us would not get a chance to or even choose to be in, like you know, rock climbing on El Capitan and looking down and it really looks like you're looking down thousands of, of uh, feet um, in exotic you know, rainforests and deserts. And there is a lifelike feel because you have stereoscopic depth, you've got wild, wide field of vision, and as you move, the objects in the uh, field of view move at the right with the right parallax. And there is certainly an emotional feeling that you get in being immersed in a breathtaking environment that you don't get when you're looking at a, um, uh, a TV. Uh, the question though, given the history of stereo photography, uh, that is that that added psychological benefit of depth, I really dig it and that's one of my hobbies but history tells us that people aren't willing to endure a lot of discomfort or expense just to get the third dimension through binocular vision as opposed to all the other ways we get the third dimension.